the legal challenges arising out of the December 21st no-confidence motion effectively created seven vacancies in the National Assembly. The private citizen, Compton Reid, had moved to the court to challenge the election of Mr. Charndas Prasad to the National Assembly on the basis that he held dual citizenship. The High Court agreed, and this was later confirmed by the Court of Appeal. It meant that on the government benches, the four members of Parliament and ministers with dual citizenship had to be removed from the House. The same goes for three on the opposition benches. Today, the government filled all of the vacancies on its side. One of the new members of Parliament, who is also to be appointed a minister, is Tabitha Sarabo Hali. It is a, it's a good sign that the government is um, catering, well, not catering to that the government believes that young people too can fulfill um, their mandate, can, can take up positions such as the one that I will take up today as a member of parliament. Uh, as a, a person who has been involved in politics for a while and has been serving for a while, um, it's not it's not overwhelming feeling because I have been serving in uh, various capacities, but this is just an, uh, an, an, an ability, this is the ability for me to now step it up to a new level and serve in a, in a greater capacity than I've been serving thus far. Among the four new parliamentarians is a young man from Burbies, Renard Ward, who is inclined towards agriculture and getting youths involved. I wish to say that I'm very thankful for this opportunity to serve the Parliament of Guyana and to my constituencies who would have placed their support on my shoulders. I wish to thank them thus far and I look forward for their continued support. Um, and at, at this time I must say when the news came to me soon after I heard that it rained across Guyana. Rupununi got rain, Georgetown got rain, Burbies got rain, and from an agriculture background, that is great news for everyone, including the farmers. What do you suppose the role of an MP is? To represent my constituency, represent those people whose voices can't be heard at a level at which decisions will be made to make their lives different. As I mentioned before, I'm from an agriculture base and I'll be looking at young people in agriculture. I'll be looking at the urban rural or the rural urban migration and creation of jobs within the rural communities. I, I'm a rural person myself. I was born and raised on the East Bank of Burbies um, in a farming community. Both my parents are farmers still and I am a farmer myself among other things within the agriculture sector. Another parliamentarian comes from Burbese. Her name is Donna Matu. The other person elected to the House is Mr. Mervyn Williams. He previously served in the National Assembly. The resignations of four government ministers, that is Minister of State Joseph Harmon, the Minister of Public Service Dr. Rupert Rupnerine, the Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin and the Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich created vacancies in the government. On Thursday, President David Granger announced reassignments. One of the more significant reassignments was that of the Minister of Public Affairs Don Hastings as the Minister of State. She spoke with us about what her new position would entail. I am humbled to know that His Excellency could have placed his confidence in me and appoint me as the Minister of State. And I look forward, I'm excited and I look forward for working with all the stakeholders who are interested in the development of this country. Uh, your portfolio is quite wide, at least the one that's Minister of State at the moment. Are you scared about any of those positions? No, not at all. Oil and gas is something that's very big. Well, there is a special department that has been established called the Department of Energy, and I will work with them. But it's under you, so are you, do you think you're up for it? Well, of course. <laughs> Who will be your replacement as Minister of Public Affairs? I have no idea. The only ministerial appointment left vacant is that of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. On Thursday, the President did not announce a new Minister of Foreign Affairs. Today, the Prime Minister was unsure when that appointment could be made or who is even acting as Minister of Foreign Affairs. The President uh, will address that issue. I, I can't say that's a matter of the President's prerogative. In the meantime, who's acting here? Um, Usually when the, pres the foreign minister is out, we have one other person acting. I suspect it's either the minister of the state or 
Minister Trotman. There is a protocol that we, we follow, but because of the recent changes, I don't know how that has shifted, if at all. During today's session of the National Assembly, the Speaker, Dr. Barton Scotland, affirmed that the Court of Appeal decision recently means that the government had been restored to its full authority unless the Caribbean Court of Justice rules otherwise. For the newsroom, Neil Marks reporting.